Good Friday morning. Garden Guide Charlie Stocker is joining us, taking your calls. That number is on the bottom of your screen if you'd like to call in and ask Charlie a question. So, Charlie, what, what, do you, what wisdom do you have to share with us today? Uh, we well, some calls? yesterday <clears throat> we went to the community garden on the west side between two houses. The one house in the center was, was uh, torn down. This was five years ago. And now there's a whole community on the west side uh, headed by Chris Boris and Carolyn Hagedorn, and they have made a garden of, of vegetables, of pollinating flowers uh, to help the uh, garden grow even better. They're pulling out plants and putting in new... It, it, it's right across the street from Pierre Funeral Home. So I encourage you to go over there. It's absolutely delightful. And the produce, and they've got kids working. I mean, it's a whole educational process. And uh, Carolyn's a little bit, you know, uh, uh, eccentric. She's eccentric. And we love eccentric here. But she we is do. so delightful. Just delightful. So anyway. That's awesome. So some good yeah, advice. So we, did, place we did some videos there. We did about seven or eight videos there. We're going to do some more. Uh, and just let people see that you can do raised gardens as a community. Yeah, we know Ron's doing a raised garden this year. We'll find out how his is doing here in a few minutes. Uh, Gary has a question for you first, Charlie. Morning, Gary. Good morning, Charlie. Good morning. I ha actually, I have three questions Great. for you. Um, last week you mentioned uh, something to treat poison ivy, and I didn't get that written down. I'd uh -huh. like to know what that is. Okay. And also, does that impact the surrounding growth? Because we have... Uh, blackberries and bushes and things like that around it, and we didn't uh -huh. want to have those die. Yeah. Um, and then my second question is the same thing for poison oak. And then my last question is, is how can we get rid of chiggers? Because they are just, <laughs> they're, they're e eating us alive at night yeah. when we try to sit outdoors. Okay. Uh, the first for your poison ivy and your poison oak and vines that... Um, are giving you a problem, okay? Number one, you wanna water that area real good. Now, why do you wanna water the area real good? Because that starts the growth activity stronger in those plants you wanna get rid of. So they start growing real well, and then you put a 2,4-D and a dicamba, you wipe it on the leaf, okay? You wipe it on the leaf, and it, it's a growth regulator and it will grow the plant to death. Uh, you may have to do it twice, but as long as you don't spray it on the soil uh, and it bleeds out and affects other plants, you'll be all right. You wanna wipe it on there and you'll see the results of your labor uh, over a period of about two weeks. You can do it both for poison ivy, you can do it for poison oak, and then to get rid of chiggers, <clears throat> they have a life cycle of about three weeks. So one spraying with permethrin is not enough and you would spray it in your lawn in the areas of your landscape. You want to do it one time, and then do it the next week, and then do it the next week, and you'll take care of the eggs, you'll take care of the larvae, the nymphs, and the adults. But you've got to do it over a three-week period. Good advice, Charlie. Herschel was up next. Morning, Herschel. Yes. Good morning. Yes. What's your question for Charlie? Okay, I've got a dwarf oak leaf hydrangea uh -huh. ruby slipper. And the leaves are turning black. They've got a lot of little holes in them. Uh -huh. And the flowers, instead of being red this time of year, they're turning brown. They're turning brown. Okay. Um, has anyone sprayed anything around it? To... Uh, neem oil. I sprayed ne neem, neem oil. Neem fine. Neem oil's fine. Uh, a lot of times, the oak leaf hydrangea uh, and, and uh, uh, a lot of the other hydrangeas, uh, as we get into the fall like this and it's been dry, they'll start a premature coloring. Uh, they'll have some black spots on them, but it's nothing to concern yourself with because they're just going through the aging process as they go into the fall. Uh, un unless I saw just a wholesale drying up of all of the leaves, uh, I wouldn't worry about it. But if you can, Herschel, send me a picture on Hay Garden Guy Charlie Stocker Facebook and I can look at it and tell you what it is. A picture is worth a thousand words, and that would be the case here. 
And Charlie may give you more than a thousand words in his response, now, sometimes right? Sometimes I bore people. Sometimes <laughs> I bore people. Hey, well, Charlie, you'll be back with us in about yep. 30 minutes, maybe a little bit less with some more uh, advice if you want to call that number in about 20 minutes or so. Ron, you talk about those raised gardens. He's been doing one this I'm year. I'm so proud of him. Ron, how's it been going? Oh, it's been going great. You know, I did it last year, too. What I've done, I've swapped uh, the, where I usually plant the tomatoes with the peppers, and I think that made a big difference. My tomatoes are Charlie, I should have brought you some tomatoes in. I really should have. He thinks, oh, <laughs> I'm bringing that. Next week, I'm bringing you tomatoes. I've got two turkey vultures waiting for me to go speak outside about the weather forecast and that radar you see that they're perched on. That's going to get a workout this afternoon. I'll have that and more coming up.